was the ones getting run around the map with less wave clear, mm -hmm. and they stayed even despite all that. So Gravity actually came out against a lot of odds in that game. The Diana Band keeps coming out. I'm so curious. Definitely from, definitely from scrims. I'm so curious. That's scrim That's knowledge. Good. So curious about the Diana Band? Yeah. Like, I want to see how scarring that Diana has to have been to make first <laughs> ban every round for Gravity. Yep. It, that, every, means, that means they, they, even if it's picked on TSM's side, it means that Keen doesn't have a counter pick for it. Every playoffs we have something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, last playoffs it was Shao Shao's Twisted Fate, uh, where it was just banned in every game right. even though he'd never played it in other. LCS. And they eventually played it in the semifinals and ended up losing with it. A lot of these times, <laughs> the bark is greater than the bite with these picks. Yep. But for now, uh, the bark was very powerful and Gravity doesn't want to lose the series because of it. So that knowledge of one person getting the champion they just completely want to play is too strong. Looks like it would either be Bjergsen or Santorin, honestly, for that Diana pickup. Still, last band goes out. It is the Braum that will not be seen after being on both teams in the first game. So Alistar, Jana, both left up now, as yep. well as Ari, which has been banned both From games Bjergsen. against Bjergsen. All right, Diana, Ari, usually what we were seeing. First pick here, there's a lot of priority open, and it feels like that, or it looks like, I should say, TSM feels Santorin's Nidalee is just too big to let go. Yeah, or even moves in Italy is too scary to let go without having Braum on That's their own side. That's a great point. Uh, Braum is very good against the Italy, but without that on the table, uh, interesting proposition that Gravity left TSM in, almost forcing them into banning Italy, saying Gravity is totally fine playing mm -hmm. the Elise and something else. But what will that something else be? I'm very curious. I don't think they should pick Elise now. You should get your support, possibly get your AD carry, because Sivir's still on the table with Callista gone and Tristana. Well, it to me, it depends on whether you think it's a power pick or not. Uh, whether they think Sivir is more powerful or whether they think you can just trade that for a Sivir or Graves Grab or Kog'Ma, right? Uh, since Gravity is so dependent on counterpicking, I actually don't really care what order they pick on the red side unless they think something is super high priority like Olaf could be. But it's yeah. not. Alistair is there. That's high priority. Weird picking back from Gravity. Man. Good switch at the end. Some mind games with the Olaf hover. That's been Dyrus two games so far in the quarterfinals here in the playoffs. Let's see what they go for this time. The Olaf is still open. TSM can still organize the same type of composition they've been trying to go for. I do like the Alistar takeaway here because now it leaves in terms of top tier supports left. You can go with the Thresh again. You can go with something like that. You could also go with the Janna here, but then it becomes a poke disengage comp, which Olaf doesn't really fit into. So if you want to go with that high tier support that allows you to win lane, they are going to maybe go back to the Thresh. We've seen it both games so far, and Lustboy was playing it. He was caught out a lot on that champion, though. Yeah. Gives them some pick potential. Let's see if TSM can adapt from game to game. We always say that in game, the current adaptation of within the flow of the game isn't something they can do. Between games, it's stronger for them, and they're able to come out with a new strategy. See if they do. They ran kind of the same comp twice in a row to now put Wild Turtle on Jinx. They still have that Thresh though. So throwback a little bit for TSM. Mm -hmm. They did have a lot of Wild Turtle Jinx in the spring when they were so successful. Uh, but already against Elise and Alistair, Jinx is a little bit of a sitting duck to get Chain CC. It's a dangerous situation in which to pit Jinx into. Knowing that there are two 80 carry bans already, though, they might be expecting a Sivir, and they used to have Jinx as their pick against Sivir because they think it has a superior lane. Yeah. We'll see what ends up happening here oh. with the last few picks. Cycled through a lot of champions there, but I feel like Sivir, Corky, most likely on the table here for Altec. Ash would have been very interesting with the way Ash? they can play the Cocoon game yeah. here. Oh. And yeah, they do lock it a very Ash big Alistar amount of crowd, crowd control from every player so far. Hard yeah. CC that's coming in from Gravity. It's a lot of catch and a lot of team fight potential. But that's the thing is when you stack so many CCs, you have to have better coordination that's on true. your team. Absolutely true. You might have to have Olaf running Jarvin. through that. Do the mid Jarvin, Bjergsen. Please. He's been spamming it in solo queue. I love mid Jarvin. But uh, it would kind of prop them into a bit of a full AD with only Nidalee as the AP threat, which we kind of see can work as long as you have a lot of damage out of the jungle. The fact that it's hovered makes me less convinced that he's going to play it. The pick of Olaf would just feel good here, being able to run through all that crowd control. If you're the one to eat it, gives gravity kind of a different aspect of who they need to focus in the fight, or a different target, I should say. Lust Boy is going to lock in that Lulu for Bjergsen. Yeah, I think this is almost necessary for TSM. 
knowing how strong Gravity's CC wall will be if TSM wants to have a, anyone that can dive. It almost has to be Olaf. And if you're doing that, you also kind of have to give him Lulu for the speeding and the shielding so he can do his job. This yep. is, uh, even though Bjergsen has played shieldy type in both of his games, the Lulu is much more defined as an Olaf in power and enabler. And I ultimately like that choice. Yeah, that's what Bjergsen has been doing this entire series. It's just enabling the rest of his team. Now, Wild Turtle on a hyper carry, he's going to be a big threat in late game. This yeah. is basically their game one composition over again, but Thresh instead of Bromp, and then instead of the Sivir, you now have a Jinx, which is a higher threat in the late game for team fights. I do like the Olaf, though, because you talk about how much CC they have. He can just soak an Ash Arrow on the front line, no problem. Yep. Be very careful with who you want to engage on. 10 seconds left here for Gravity to round out their composition, looking for a mid laner. What does Keen have to bring to the game? He's going to switch back over to the Orianna. A lot more play this season for her coming in towards the end of the split. In other regions, and we were wondering if it would be an NA. Looks like they're starting to pick her up. Interesting here. So last game, we saw a difficulty for Shockwaves to be landed. There was a lot of things they could just straight up jump away yeah. from that Shockwave. This game, this is a situation in which Orianna can succeed. There are four champions with hard lockdown in which to make sure the Shockwave hits, and also there is only one champion on TSM that can innately jump outside of the Shockwave. Obviously, Olaf can put on Ragnarok and also get right. out of it, but it's, it's a way better situation in which to pick Ori, and he should be able to split lane with Bjergsen. And it's not just that they have the CC, they have delivery systems too. Three of these champions yep. can actually get the ball into the thick of the fight very quickly. A lot of aggression from both compositions. We're ready to fight phase, if you will. We're seeing Team Solo mid, though, switch up what they were doing all season long. These Bjergsen focus comps. Get it to this guy, feed this guy. Now it's a bit spread out. It's going to be Wild Turtles Jinx. Olaf for Dyrus again. They're going to try to spread out that threat that TSM can bring. Gravity still trying to work the flex pick game. We'll see what works coming into game three. It's time to update those series picks as well. Send hashtag TSM win or hashtag GV win to at LOL Esports. As always, we'll tally up the votes in just a few minutes as we get into game. And we're going into game three. Gravity with a pretty different composition. It looked like it was going to have a hard time winning. Really took it to Team Solo Mid and only found a few deaths along the way. Impressive stuff. We're going to see what they have for game three. Both teams making some decent size adaptations. Obviously, TSM yeah. going with the Jinx, going to be heavily targeted by the crowd control. But as you said, Gravity making the most changes in the champion select, kind of trying to get the surprise factor back. Yeah. If anything is a surprise pick, it would be Altex Ash. We'll have to see how he can lean that against Turtle, and if he can be a carry threat on a less mobile AD carry. So, Welcome to TSM going with the, if it's... Not broke, don't fix it. It broke a little bit last game, but still stick with the same composition that they've been kind of trying to push forward here for the advantage. Maybe some extra aggression from Bunny Fufu in the bot lane. He brings himself another mana pot on top of some biscuits. Maybe to expect to be healing up more. Get himself crazy when they're in the jungle to be able to use that and keep some people up. Early wards coming in from both teams. Let's see if this changes up. We saw TSM stick his four the first game and try to throw gravity off. Well, these are lane swap wards. Mm -hmm. uh, the TSM is going into place. They're going for the invade wards, get the deep spots. However, they didn't leave any retreat wards, so they don't know exactly what gravity could do, but they can assume they then placed them. Uh, this splits the map, so the jungle that is on the top lane side is basically TSM's territory, and gravity gets the bottom lane side. That's most likely the way this one's going to play out based on how the teams are still not going back into the jungle that they've given up and we'll also prep a lane swap. Always wonder what teams are thinking about in this point. You know, I get this, I get this, I'm safe to move. You know, when, when do we feel the first point of doing something different happens? Is it after the first clear for junglers? Is it after kind of the first few waves for mid lane? When does this break apart for both teams? When you test uh, which person's kind of messing up the lane swap or what? Yeah, well, basically, mm -hmm. it's it's Depends literally on what pushes on what there, there's so many different decisions that are being made. It, right. it breaks as soon as someone 
picks a different decision than the other. And some of the decisions are somewhat arbitrary, like whether or not you want to freeze the lanes, whether or not you want to shove up the lanes. That's the point when you're forcing someone into a decision that can create differentiation. Until then, though, this has been identical from both sides. Right. Just got to check the top and bottom waves, see if either one is frozen, and that will then start a decision chain. But if they're both frozen, we're probably seeing the same game for a little bit. Yeah. And then you see how many camps the jungler top Gravity laner do, how quickly right. they get there. And you can see they actually just match each other here. So Gravity is adapting what TSM did in the first game. Strong, we'll see who gets to that turret first. It's obviously going to be Gravity on the bottom. However, the Jinx in the top, definitely going to put TSM probably at that same damage. We'll see who has the better move after this one. Usually we'll see teams with not really enough gold or wards to keep pushing themselves up. So it's just an easy swap back. See who gets caught during that swap, though. That's usually a big thing. If we're talking about champions that have the capability to take the turret down faster, it's a low health Olaf and a Jinx and Minigun. They Absolutely. could crush this very quickly. But because they usually want to bounce the wave, uh, they're not. They're going to end up taking the turrets at about the same time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the same strat from game one on TSM where they leave Dyrus to get the solo gold from this turret, as well as he would want to bounce. And yeah, he's letting the turret kill the last few minutes. Minions. Uh, and he's looking to bounce the wave. Be good to go. So it's not Dyrus going down to a move and haunts her gank now in the beginning of the game. It did just happen a few minutes from now, but things are safe. Turrets are down. We'll see where the swaps go. The only difference we saw <laughs> yeah. was the fact that Gravity shared the gold yep. and TSM gave it all to Dyrus. So we have made progress. The teams have <laughs> become a little different. Really. Yeah. Yeah. I think the decision behind that is you want Hauntzer to at least have some gold to contest with Iris. Yep. And then you also want to put gold on Altec because he's the AD carry and he does so much work for this Gravity Squad. You just see how they play around it. And that's almost a little bit of a reactionary move to what TSM did with the Olaf top. Yep. Absolutely. Otherwise, that would have been Gravity just giving it to Altec. That's what they normally do in that situation. They just don't want Hauntzer to be ran over by a very powerful Iris. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. It sounds like they've, it looks like, I should say, they've executed it very well so far. Four to the bot side. No commitment by Santorin. He actually doesn't feel comfortable there, so he heads back down around to guard Boss Boy and Wild Turtle from the back half. Very strong play by Altec, or I should say forward play. He did this last time on Triss just before his team got there. Almost fading in these fights, but it's not anything TSM wants in the early game. They keep themselves safe. Oh, they may not, though. Not enough wards to keep themselves completely safe. Yeah, the collapse is coming in, though, from Lulu and Nidalee. Hans is going to have to run. That's also oh, a TP. No, 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 no. Got a little too ahead of themselves without really getting an advantage of being in the jungle here. Now being completely pushed out by Team Solo Mid. One undertow hits. That's the ghost on coming in from Dyrus. Will he be able to connect some more? The Reckless Swing comes down. They are able to get first blood. The turret gold and first blood to Dyrus with three assists to the rest of the team. Things are looking good here as TSM swap it back down to the bot side. And Keen just continues pushing out the mid lane. He didn't have priority in that lane, and Bjergsen's able to show up bottom. Yep. Doesn't even get an assist for it, though. That's but true. <laughs> first yeah. blood on a Dyrus, though, is pretty huge as far as the mm -hmm. Dyrus, just group and have Dyrus run at him. Just a Dyrus comp. That's all TSM is to do <laughs> in this one. It's, it's very nice. Go. They gave him full turret gold. They gave him first blood. His teleport also pays off in that situation. And as you said, the Bjergs in Rome is something we do not see frequently. Uh, but it is a different TSM in this playoffs, uh, making hopefully improved decisions for their late season. It always seems to be a different TSM in playoffs. When the pressure's on, yeah. they always seem to just flip a switch. And this is a very, very different TSM than what we were seeing. Mm -hmm. Bjergsen taking a supportive role for the team. And it's always one of those things where get, people are saying when TSM is in a slump, Bjergsen, let him carry. Give him these assassins. Give him these champions that he can actually destroy the game with. And now they're empowering Dyrus and yeah. Wild Turtle to carry the game. And Bjergsen, just being such a solid laner and player, is now boosting them up. Ability to kind of sit back and call some shots as well once these fights begin. Get them a little more safety there to do so without being pressured to make some big plays. Bringing Cleanse into that mid lane to make sure he can get out of all the crowd control that they're looking at on the side of gravity. We talked about that a bit, and safety is just the key word here for Team Solomit. The Lulu pick, the Cleanse, keeping Dyrus and Turtle alive. Seven minutes, still looking at Alltech here on the bot side, and he's still. Playing up quite far, looking if they can get a bait with Bunny Fufu just on the wing. 
Mid lane looks pretty clean on both sides. Just about 50 CS to both mid laners at seven minutes in. Tied there. And a much better game for Hanser versus Dyrus' Olaf for the past few games. They're much more closer than CS. Dyrus now has a long lane ahead of him. He's going to constantly shove up, so that leaves him susceptible to moves ganks. Mm -hmm. Let's see what move does with these opportunities. I keep an eye on him in this game. Dyrus is about to hit 6 too, so he's going to be become much harder to gank for this Elise and Alpine. Yep. Just talking about move. Already had a few plays between the last game. Set back a little bit. Even in farm, as Beer, or Santorin, I should say, continues to take his camps down and steal some of moves, making it that much harder. Push towards the top lane. It's going to have Dyrus moving in nice. They have to get some pressure up there to calm him down a little bit. Do you guys keep doing this too? They keep getting a monster wave in the top lane that's going to hit a tier two, and then it looks like they position around bottom lane instead of looking for a dive top to deny the top laner even more CS. Yeah, yeah it's an optimization that you would like to see TSM make, uh, but this early into the game, it's very hard to get that many people down behind the turret. So TSM instead, when they make that giant wave hit the turret, have been doing this exact move. This is so similar to game one. They then rotate as many people as they can towards the bottom side of the map and you look for a turret or kills in the jump. They just flip sides, so. Yep. Bjergsen is making the call here. They know that Keen just used his ultimate and he's very low on mana after using that full spell chain. Move oh. getting hit. There's the arrow coming through. It hits Santorin in the face, but does not stop Move from going down. A little late reaction on the bot half of the map, and they can't get there in time. The nine minute blue buff invade worked. <laughs> Third <laughs> time's a charm <laughs> for TSM. Uh, That's this true. one. This one, though, was mainly because they were comboing it with the giant wave landing up top and knowing there's no teleport to collapse. They banned the Shen, so the collapse could not stop that play from working. And it's a nice pressure advantage for TSM, as well as a good boost. Yeah, and they had already previously gotten the TP out of Haunter. Dyrus came down, cleared yeah. Raptor camp, moved over to where the fight was, so he had prepped it, knew that staying in that wave up top is going to accomplish nothing. So he just lets Haunter push it out. Haunter's now even in CS with Dyrus. And now Dyrus has a long wave to push out again. The TPs will be up most likely by the next time a conflict rolls around. Getting some changes now. Thanks for changing, guys. But he does have the advantage. Very, very slightly. <laughs> so TSM now a 2K gold lead. One turret dropped across the map. You can see in the rotations of going side to side here, TSM's been able to pick up those few kills. We'll see where they can go with it. Dragon really hasn't been an object just yet, or an option, I should say. No wards being placed there either for either team to think about it. So mostly clearing right now until the jungler's are ready to make that happen. Lost Boy getting his wards down and getting the clears out as well. His Sightstone finished over as well. I should say, that's Bunny Fufu's Sightstone. Them being on red side two times has caught me. <laughs> I know. They swapped finally. They finally swapped. Bjergsen with double buffs after his engages towards the last fights. Very nice for him in the mid lane. He was able to get something just like that in the previous game. Looks like yeah. he's going to keep himself nice and safe. 83 to 86, still very, very close in that mid lane as they're just matching each other and buys pretty much along the way. Rickson, even though he was roaming early on in the game, picks up some pretty nice uh, items to go with that kill. I, I do also want to point out the inconsistency of laning with Kane versus the consistency of the laning from Bjergsen. Yeah. It looks like they're overpowering gravity right now, again, thanks to a Lulu roam to take down another turret. But as far as double digit CS leads or deficits, uh, this split, Bjergsen, he has had a double digit lead in eight games. Keen has had a double digit lead in nine games, so you'd think that makes Keen a very strong laner. But because of Keen's inconsistency, he's had a negative CSD in four games, whereas that has never happened to Bjergsen as far mm -hmm. as being double digit down. Even with all of the roaming Bjergsen did this game on Lulu, he was still only down three CS attempts. Right. So really his laning is now being capitalized in a more proactive way. Because previously in the regular season, TSM would have a 10 CS lead on Bjergsen and no advantages. This time, they have a 2 CS discrepancy on Bjergsen, yeah. but turrets, dragons, kills, first blood for their top laner, all the good things. It's the transfer of power that needs to happen for TSM to exceed. And, and not some... to mention, when, while all this is going yeah. on, Santorin is still farming the jungle like crazy. He's creating a large advantage for himself because of the safe lane for Bjergsen. There's no kill pressure. You don't need to camp mid lane. That's the thing that works out. It seems as if since Bjergsen does this, now we can actually expand to allowing and enabling. Empower Dyrus to do something. Empower Wild Turtle to do it. it just works that Bjergsen kind of had that all along. Now they're trying to pressure into it. Yeah, large gold lead is in the jungle by a thousand. 
little over a thousand. And then top lane is right behind at 900 because they gave the turret gold over and the kill to Dyrus very early on the first blood. Very smart and very strong around the consistency of Bjergsen here. But this is good for TSM moving forward because when they were in their slump, it felt like everybody was scared on the team. Everybody wasn't empowered to and make only, And only moves. Bjergsen could care. Exactly. Like only Bjergsen was the person who could make moves mm -hmm. and blow a game up. Now we're seeing Dyrus run away with the game. We're seeing Wild Turtle be empowered to carry as well. Jinx. And they're moving as a unit despite being down in kills last game. They're still picking up turrets. This game, they're doing more of the same. They're out rotating gravity all three games so far. Their ground needs to pick up their game as far as being able to keep up with this lane swap, and that's for sure. Uh, the move is behind this game. First Blood definitely hurt him. The mid lane pressure has been transferring elsewhere, and it's really just gravity being behind in rotations again and again. That actually works very nicely in Santorin's favor. Keen just left her at aggro, so they can get a few more shots on. Is that a home guard? No, that's a bootless Maokai. Yep, that'll do it. <laughs> Not really going right. to be too much fear there. Got him. <laughs> it's, it's a little too early for him to even think about having home guards. Early teleport. This is just true. It's the wards have to be closer or that teleport has to be hidden if they want to surprise TSM. Now they're down teleport, they're down health, and it's a five-man siege for TSM in the mid. With the wave clear, though, I don't think they're going to make much of this. Play. Yeah, you'd think he'd had home guards by watching the camera and being like, oh, we're at tier twos already. <laughs> He's just flexing his tree muscles. People are running through the enemy jungle. Exactly. Getting it in there. Still only 13 minutes, almost 14 minutes in this game. So the teleport fear plays. Gravity coming in. Next level mind thinking. Still and gives a big case. advantage in terms of TP to Dyrus. They oh, yeah. to go split push make Haunter answer him and then make him play across the map. So watch out for That's that here true. as they get this middle turret. In the big picture of things, TSM's getting so many small wins they'll be able to use over the next few minutes here. It's going to make it tough for gravity to really do anything. All tech trying to take care of the top lane and patch that up. But after this, gravity is going to pretty much have to sit back and maybe wait for next dragon. They don't have too much other than camps to clear. Yeah, and they're falling pretty far behind in other aspects too. I mean, this is a non-trivial goal disadvantage. 3,700 mm -hmm. gold already at the 14 minute mark. On top of the dragons and the war disadvantage they have on the map. This is, this is going really, really badly for gravity. Also a teleport disadvantage. So, I mean, unless they get some ridiculous pick uh, with move catching a beautiful cocoon or Kane getting a four to five end shockwave, the mid game team fight is very heavily in this sense. Yeah, they do have a lot of pick potential, like you said. Even if it's an ash arrow across the map in another lane, they yep. can still create an advantage. But we haven't been seeing. Well, the most interesting thing about that is TSM is somewhat well prepared. Uh, Bjergsen with plans, Dyrus with the, yep. with the Olaf ultimate, and also a Thresh. So unless they're bursting someone down within the duration of the Ash Arrow, there's probably a chance they can click a Thresh Lantern and get him out of there. So there's a, yep. it's really hard for Gravity to actually get the pick with the Ash Arrow. Whoever gets nailed with the arrow is also getting a Lulu ulted, so it has to be instant, and nobody has instant kill potential on the side of Gravity. Righteous Glory has been finished, so with the teleports, it's maybe a little bit more speed, even if he doesn't have brown bags on his feet. Team and a half in. Looks like Gravity may finally try to get this top turret down. Yep. They're gonna put quite a bit of pressure on it. And they stay for safety. They say, you guys can back, not yet. Let's make sure we don't get completely dove on, since we don't have vision of Team Solo mid right now. Who is? Trying to sneak into the bot side of the jungle. Testing this tier two. They have a Nidalee. They have a Jinx. You could kill turrets very quickly if you get to them. They'll get some alone time with this turret because the backs are a little yep. off here. Let's see if they can get it. TSM has been so far ahead as far as rotations go. Here comes the arrow. I don't think it's game. Oh, it, it went over a ward. Oh, nice little team disengaged there. Take it down the turret. Turtle actually activates the rockets. Make sure he gets that distance in it as soon as possible. Get ASAP turret down. 2 0 now. Very reminiscent of the first game. A low kills, a lot of caution. Oh. Hello. Oh. Undertow onto Altec. Summoner heal negates the E true damage. That may be the miss he required. And flashing that Undertow saved Altec's life, but he oh. used a lot to get out alive. 
They're all tech now. They lose the pressure in the other two lanes. They just burned summoners and had yeah. a rotation up top lane. These turrets are falling way too fast for summoners, gravity. And they don't have to worry about an ash arrow coming in, so they can go pretty headstrong oh. into these fights. Bunny Fufu, Unbreakable Will goes on. The repels up for move. The last few hits of glitter cannot go across, and the javelin misses as well over the left shoulder of move. Low members from gravity do not spell good things, and TSM can reach these turrets with a full team, and that's what's going to happen yeah. here in the top. Just so much siege power here between the members of TSM. If they get to a turret, which they can very easily with their wave clear, they're going to knock it down very quickly. And you see that right here. Yeah. Move. Their hearts are twisted, advancing in. New was kind of ill advised. Gets himself out right quick. TSM working very methodical right now. This is the cleanest they've played of the three games. Mm -hmm. uh, game one, it looked like they knew. So. When you're having these Lulu Olaf team compositions, the, it's, it feels like the win conditions are somewhat simplistic. You you group up generally, you put all the stuff on Olaf, and you go. But uh, there were a lot of times in game one where Bjergsen was caught a little bit out of position and very quickly used his summoner spells and his ultimate, so the TSM could not really confidently group and pull off these strategies. TSM's not getting caught whatsoever. Their wards are ahead of the game. They're rotating killing turns very well, and they have the big cooldowns for when the team fights happen. Gravity wants to burst down this dragon, but it's a very strong TSM that can collapse upon them. Ball the arrow. to the right. Bjergsen has to move it across. He's going to get one shockwave. Onto Hauntzer there. The rest of the gravity team flashes through, but they're all slivers of There's health Dyrus. instantly in the beginning of the fight. Double lift, triple kill for Dyrus. Looking for the Penta. That's going to be a kill for Turtle. It could still be the Quadra. That's a dropping spider. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Never going up the spout again. Quadra coming in for Dyrus. It's just a Dyrus comp. Yeah. <laughs> you kill everyone. Just Dyrus things. And that was just a perfect example of everything TSM has built up in the first 18 minutes into the game, coming to a head at the Dragon Pit. Gravity was completely cornered. They tunnel on that objective, but TSM was vastly superior. They did a TP flank as well, which is something they've hardly been able to do all split long. They get a massive win. One Jinx rocket away from a Penta for Dyrus. Seven kills to zero, 8,000 golden. And let's just have a check right here. That's an inhibitor turret down, and it's 19 minutes in the game. Yeah. It is still extremely early, so Gravity are now going to have a funnel of farm into them, and TSM need to keep the pressure up to close this game out, or else Gravity is going to have a source of income that they can constantly go to. It is the best inhibitor to have down, though. You can see here, Shockwave comes through, not yeah. ideal from Keen, and then Dyrus just gets backline access, goes immediately for Altec. Yeah, and everyone in Gravity is trapped, even if they go oh, over that the wall, toast. it's to their own base. The axe just went through everyone. Dyrus is a monster in this fight. Oops. Oh, he juggled it! <laughs> he was, <"Bah!" laughs> there was a Jinx rocket and a Nidalee spear trying to chaos away that quadra kill. Everybody wanted uh, the kill onto Moon. And he put a dance in there. I liked it. I liked it. A little bit of swagger as he comes up with a kill. Four of them for himself. Now 5 0 and 1. And what a way to be putting a game on Dyrus' back. And then you said, even on the flank teleport, if we remember, teleports were one of the things that plagued TSM the most. And Dyrus being a little late or too early and the communication wasn't there. On point in the playoffs here in the quarterfinals, it's really helping to carry TSM it, in a surge of momentum in game three. Neither team showed this much pressure in game one or two. Yeah, definitely not. This is TSM turning on mid-series. It's something they've set as a strength coming into the series, and now Gravity is going to have to bounce back very, very hard yeah. in Game 4. It's the amount of best of five series these two teams have played, greatly favored by TSM. The amount of best of fives they've played as a group, experience so in the true. playoffs. All of these things are heavily in the favor of TSM. This is Altec's first playoff series. This is right. Moo's first playoff series. Four of these five guys on TSM were at Worlds last year. They've been to MSI as a team. They've yeah. been to IM Katowice as a team. They won the spring split. Uh, experience is not even close for these guys, and it's the type of mid-series adaptation that Gravity's now going to have to count back. That simple feeling of knowing that you've been there before. TSM has had the, we're two games down feeling. Can it come back? Yes, it can. Knowing that end of the road has a light. TSM still pushed for it very hard. Gravity wondering, weaning, what can they do here? Now they're going to try set up one more time. It's definitely power in numbers. They do not want to leave each other's side at this point with the base being the last thing in front of the Nexus for Team Solo Mid here. Team Solo Mid's baiting them ever so slowly. The carrot's definitely out in front here, and they're saying, come on, come out of the base a little bit more. It'll be fine. Just a little bit. Ignore the wave. We'll get there. Ignore. Don't worry about it. The wave looks good. 
get the gold. Oh. They have so many options, though. As that wave pushes bottom, you can see middle, you can see each top with a split push, and if they ever misstep, or they put too many people bottom, or they don't put the right person there, you immediately go Baron. You have the vision control, and you can see it. They're actually going to go for Baron right now. This is a, a tricky force, because Gravity needs someone back to hold the super minions off. Uh, but it is a very early Baron, and TSM has a lot of people stopping the collapse on a Baron, oh, so the guys doing it are going to get a little Stuck low. around. Well, oh. Here's the true damage. Ta-da! Unbreakable will that, says Dyrus. He goes chug chug on for a little bit more. Dyrus still wants to party. He might not want to go too crazy here. He's taking turret shots right now. He's going on a move. Move could come back with a bite, but he does not. And all the Waiting focus is on to Dyrus, giving the rest of Team Solo mid the chance to fight whatever members they want. The Trump hook so in. King Solo down. That's going to be the Ignite Command. Protect was also just coming back at the last second, but unfortunate for Keen, Hauntzer will also fall, trying his damnedest in the fight. And the Zap is dodged by Altec as he has no mana or health heading for the fountain. And they get even more off of it. More turrets, this will be an inhibitor turret at the least. Dyrus yeah. fought like four people there. Or tier two. <laughs> it extends the gold lead to 10,000, but that was actually a pretty close fight, all things considered. Yeah. Uh, when you're looking at it, it was a 9,000 gold lead before the fight. A lot of TSM people were low or slow to the battle because they were doing the Baron, mm -hmm. but ultimately that gargantuan lead uh, gave them the team fight victory oh, now yeah. and it even extended goal. See the fight one more time. Dyrus just, just came around the things back. into his own hand. Yeah. You want to check the Baron with Bunny Fufu, the man with the wards or move. So much ward Dyrus control. Getting the perfect flank off here. Yeah, this was where he got a little bit aggressive. Yeah, he just camped his ghost body. In. Took two turret shots, unfortunately. Uh, and wasn't necessarily expecting the Lulu ult at that exact juncture. Uh, ends up splitting himself from the team as well. Nice hook, though, yeah. on the backside. But even then, TSM is a little afraid of getting blown up. Very, very Hauntzer close. going a little hard. The box reset. of Lust Boy was right there, and Hauntzer says, I'll just walk around it. Yeah, Hauntzer went forward as some damage was coming out yeah. on the back line, so Move was no longer able to right. contribute, and Altec wasn't either. Very scattered, but we could expect that from a fight where they haven't really seen each other for quite some time. TSM had those pretty much eight kills, and then it was kind of a lull. So everybody's kind of wondering about what kind of damage is going to come out. And we saw that even TSM members started to get low there. Yeah, TSM's probably going to pick up the second dragon here. Mm -hmm. I do want to kind of go back to the game-defining moment here when TSM got the ace within the dragon pit. Right. Uh, and compare Six it a little ago. bit to Gravity's builds at the time. Basically, Hauntzer rushed to Righteous Glory, which is mainly built in order to force catches in a team fight. Right. But that was a grouped up 5v5 fight that doesn't have catches, so not playing towards their items in that way. Also, Keen had started the game Athenes into a tier of the Goddess, most likely because their blue buff was getting denied and he wanted to be able to clear waves. Absolutely. But that is not a combat effective build until you upgrade that item into the Archangel Staff. So that's why when the Shockwave landed onto Santorin, it didn't really seem to do anything. Yeah. Basically, both solo laners for gravity were built for things that weren't what they, exactly what they were doing. They grouped up for a fight, but didn't have the combat effective items in that fight, and it just added to the disaster that was that dragon. Yeah, it's one of those dragons you should recognize. We should probably give this up. It's a bad position yeah. for us. We're not playing around a power spike in the moment. We will turn on later. When you have a tier, you have to recognize those points in the game. Right. Kind of threw in Wild Turtles Corky with the last tier build they have. A little bit of a lull in your damage. Corky come in with a drive. This time, though, different setup of things on the side of gravity where the tiers won't really have anybody to fight during that time. You see a little push in from Team Solo Mid here, gaining full control or gravity's jungle. It's just going to make things even harder when you can't see your enemy. And now they can go from this top to mid, back and forth, and start to spread gravity thin. Objective, objective of Baron is still on the map, but with the way that last fight went, I don't think TSM wants exactly that right now. Seven to two in turrets. They are waiting for a gravity mistake. Hello. Oh, speaking <laughs> of gravity mistake. One. Yeah. Ow. It happens. Not even a chance to repel out of that one. 30 seconds on the death timers right now, and that actually could mean with Smite down, yep. TSM wants the Baron. This will be a... Uh... Medium speed Baron here. <laughs> Medium rare, please. Yeah, Dyrus teleporting in for safety, I assume. Oh. There are ways to teleport, yeah. in all honesty. They could have used that teleport flank with the Baron buff to try and end this game. Well, everybody has to back now, so. Yeah, total waste. <laughs> total and complete waste. <laughs> 
He got the pink word in the middle of the lane, I think. He did it. He did it. There you go. Worth. Worth. Yeah, the exposed inhibitor as well. 4TSM, expect them to group and go for that. Yeah, and now Dyrus doesn't really have the split option available because of the TP. He can go for it, though, but that's a big risk. So I think he is waiting for his item. So Black Cleaver ran to it. He's actually pretty big for that top lane. He just haunts his righteous glory right now, trying to finish up a Randuin. So we'll have double effect on slowing once he gets into the fight. <laughs> if he can get into the fight, that is. So here's something. Obviously, it, it helps when you're winning this game, but distribution of kills and resources is so heavily favored Bjergsen in the past, and this is how different and unique this build is, at least for TSM. If we look at the gold right now for, for TSM, right. it's pretty much exactly 10,000 gold on four different people. Dyrus is a little bit ahead with 10,800, but... Santorin, Bjergsen, and Wild Turtle are all sitting in the 10,000 mark. It is, yep. when you're winning, it's easy to turn into a four threat team, but TSM has been losing as a one threat team. Right now, they're running three to four threats, and it's working quite well because of it. And when you're winning in levels, as well as that money, the levels make you stronger. You can buy things like a third item Quicksilver. Your mid already has clans. It's gonna make it harder for Gravity to even get back in this with the crowd control fights. There you go, they so move TSM up. just pushing hard. All five, put them in the bottom lane, move to mid lane, use this Baron buff. You have combat stats, combat effectiveness yep. over everybody else. Santorin's 4,000 gold up over move. Hauntzer's 3,000 gold behind Dyrus, and they get the hook nice on the Altec. Yes, TSM always says they're a different team coming oh! into play. Also, oh, the four-man wombo combo coming in with Buddy Fufu. A lot of early damage, but is the finishing damage there for Gravity. They continue to tack on that DPS. One is going to go down. Lustboy falls, but there's a lot of exit here from Team Solo. Mid, the rocket comes back through to equalize the fight. The just, support for a mid, I actually think that's in favor of TSM now. They uh, just have so much in terms of combat stats on TSM, they only lose one person, and it's the support. That's the pawn for the queen right there, and you could not be happy with that. You're obviously going to move forward if you're TSM in this situation. Another inhibitor is going to go down. We're over 30 seconds on the death timers, and TSM doesn't even want gravity to come back and oh. defend anything here. Santorin getting a little too hypey in the situation. Wild Turtle looking for another one. Twisted advance, so close to hitting him, and it does. Turtle tried to stop the home guard speed, and he somehow stays alive as well, getting the heals, the shields that he needs. The ace coming in for Team Solo mid. They just went through the batting order of gravity. Yeah, and Keen's back up. Right, right again. Honestly, though, a five-man shockwave, what looked like from Keen. I'm not sure if it caught Darius on the back end, but to have basically the perfect initiation happen and then still lose the game and the fight, oh. got to be disheartening. Even that oh, the dissonance yeah. and shockwave hitting Turtle took about 300 HP off of him. He's feeling good. He's able to get out with the rest of the team and absolutely turning Gravity's base into shambles. There's, pro shambles. There's probably not much longer to be had in this game as we reach 30 minutes. And off the Wombo combo, you were just talking about it getting disheartened. When you're about 10,000 gold behind in the game, you say, okay, there's a way back in this game. Yeah. Land we the perfect get, combo. We so get I the perfect combo. Lust Boy was out of it. Yeah, so oh, no, watch, you watch walked into it. all into walk it. into it. And then the, I think the Shockwave yeah, pulls. I think he gets Cyrus too. Or does he just run in? No, no five okay. men. Five men. Perfect so five, five men. Five four men. But you saw how little damage that actually did to yeah. Dyrus there. You sit there saying, we need this combo. You get the combo and you realize. Yeah. They oh. run enough poke on the retreat with a Glitter Lance oh, and an Undertow. Oh. And then the rocket comes in from the backside. All right. Crazy stuff. <laughs> At that point, Team Solo Mid was what? backpedaling so hard. You're not going to expect that to come across. Gravity even had the wards through Raptor and up that. So they knew the rocket was coming had they been ready for the fight to continue. Everybody thought it was dispersed, though. You can see where these guys' heads are at. Now, Sorcery Elixirs, an Iron Elixir onto Lust Boy as well, so he's a big old fresh. And it's just gonna be tough if they can start putting that surplus of items and potions into their inventory. Bunny Foo Foo, very close to be going down. He does what he can with an arrow on the backside, but there's no Unbreakable Will. There is, actually. He is just getting taken down very quickly. The cow sidesteps, but still goes down. And Team Solo Mid is running amok now in Gravity's base. Yeah, Shockwave out. takes down Santorum, but this is such a massive TSM team, Rib. 31 minutes in, TSM with a decisive game three win. 18 to four, it was one to one. TSM put themselves up one game and game point in the series versus Gravity. And it looks like TSM said they, they're gonna win three games and lose one, maybe. 
They're not liars. They're on, they're on path to doing that with this new playoff TSM. And they always show up. This new let, it's a new let strategy. Dyrus carry thing. Nobody saw that. Yeah. They cut back to us so quickly. <laughs> uh, but really, I just want to check the damage of the champions as Irene closes out the screen. So I can't tell you damage of the champions. Blame that guy. Uh, anyway, it was an impressive game by TSM for a number of reasons. Gravity, they switched up their team comp so heavily. And based on the way TSM brought the cleanse, had the Olaf, it did very much feel like uh, Gravity was outplayed as well as out-team composition. They brought so much CC but not that much damage. And then TSM brought a counter to the CC as well as some great shielding. So uh, really decisive game. They would just there. run around the map all game, mm -hmm. objective after objective, falling to TSM. And then they'd get these pickoffs. The blue invade finally worked. They were able to actually, like, the thing I like about this is they're enabling Dyrus so much, even just off giving him turret Way gold. more than usual. Dyrus turret wanted to gold. play League of Legends. He's playing League of Legends. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the long, right. con. <laughs> it's the long con. <laughs> it's the long con. It's the long con, and it's finally coming out. Let's send it over to our analysts to break down that TSM.